Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing my entire workflow for learning everything I need to know in med school. And my main powerhouse for this is using the Anki app. So before I start sharing exactly how I use Anki to memorize everything, what is Anki? Well, Anki is a flashcard app that incorporates two important methods of studying, active recall and spaced repetition. What active recall is, is basically quizzing yourself. When I do Anki flashcards, I am actively quizzing myself about the knowledge that I need to memorize. There's also spaced repetition. Say I have a flashcard that I don't know. I will hit again and it will come up again later in 15 minutes. However, if I do know the flashcard well, I will see the flashcard a second time one day later. The idea is that you space out the time that you see these flashcards and by having this time spaced out, it means that you will be reviewing concepts in a timely manner, but you don't excessively review. And for me personally, it makes sure that I am on top of the concepts. That way, something that I studied one week ago won't be completely forgotten because by using the Anki algorithm, they will show me the card maybe in five days or in seven days in order to make sure that I still remember the topics. So that's spaced repetition and active recall. Now, I'm gonna pull up Anki on my computer and I'll be sharing how I create these Anki flashcards. And, oh, before I get into that, my general workflow works like this. So I usually don't attend lectures in person. I will watch and listen to the lectures on my own time, usually when I'm at home. But before I do any of that, what I first do is I first make Anki cards. And I used to do the opposite in year two, where I would listen to lectures and then make Anki cards. But I found that switching the two, actually making Anki cards first, and then watching the lecture has been so, so helpful for me. By doing these Anki flashcards before you even watch the lecture, you have a general idea of what you're going to learn. And that way when you're in the lecture theater or when you're at home listening to recordings, you already have a mental framework of the content that you're learning. So that whenever the professor is talking about additional information, it's a lot easier for you to catch and pick up on that. In contrast, if you listen to the lecture first and then make Anki cards, when you're listening to the lecture, you have very little understanding about what the professor is talking about. And the issue is this, that you're just you're trying to just get the bare minimum. You can't even get the additional concepts. And those additional tidbits of information just fly over your head because you have no basic foundation. That made sense. That was kind of rambly, but yes. Back to actually making Anki cards. This is how I do it. First, I'm gonna pull up the Anki app on my computer, and I'm also gonna pull up a lecture slides on the oral cavity, which is an anatomy lecture that I want to make cards for. Currently, I'm using a completely new profile to walk through how I create Anki cards from zero. The basic setup is generally pretty simple, and don't aim for perfection before getting started. Just get started, and as you start, you'll start learning the shortcuts or the add-ons that you'll need, and slowly build off of that. So first what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a new deck. And here it has the default deck already, so I'm gonna rename this as Med3. First thing I need to do is I am gonna hit Add to add new cards. And this is in the Med deck. So I can add a deck under this and I'm going to label this Hus because that is my anatomy class. And under Hus, I'm going to add a deck called Neck. I am first going to add an extra fields to my cards. So you can see that the close, the my card type is closed. So you can download this off of Anki Web. And this is my favorite type of card. Okay, I'm going to add fields. I'm going to add this lecture slides, lecture notes, okay? So here you can see that I have three fields. I have text, back extra, which is for like extra information, and I have something called lecture notes. And lecture notes is where I include screenshots from my lecture. The first thing I like to do when I'm making new cards is that I will actually screenshot the lecture objectives into the extra section in order for me to have something to refer back to when I'm studying the cards. That way when I'm studying, I have a clear idea in the back of my mind. These are the lecture objectives that I need to be focusing on. I'm also gonna make text. So my text system is relatively simple. It's gonna be med3 um, 
I'm gonna call it Hus2018. And this is the this is the A flexure, so I'm gonna call this 08 underscore, and then I'll write the title of the lecture. Okay. okay, so now I have the tag. I have the card in the right card in the right deck, and I also have the right card type. So now I need to actually start making the cards. Let's so oral cavity boundaries and spaces. So this slide is talking about the two oral cavities. There's the oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper. Okay. So just based on the graphics, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a screenshot of this image to my lecture slide. So command control shift four. I want to put it in my lecture notes. So here, when I look at the card, I can always refer back to the lecture slide. My first step is not to rush in making cards. The first step is to fully understand what the lecture slide is talking about. And I really love our anatomy professors, and honestly all our professors at SU. But I find that our anatomy professors have really nice slides. Like they've got all the pictures and everything's very clear. So I really, really appreciate that. So let's see. Oral vestibule is going to be this part. It's around buccal mucosa and then buccal gingiva. So buccal gingiva is going to be the area next to the teeth and then buccal mucosa is just inner cheek. Okay, so now I know what buccal mucosa is and what the buccal gingiva is. Okay, I'm going to make a card for this slide. A lot of this feels pretty self-explanatory. So I think I'm going to put everything into one card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this out. Or no, I can copy and paste this. And control, command V. Ooh, formatting is a bit weird. No, I think I'm going to have to type this out. What do I want to know? I want to know the boundaries of this space. So I am going to close this. And the shortcut for me is shift, command C. I'm also going to close this part, shift, command, C. Okay, so that's one part, okay? I'm also going to incorporate the oral cavity proper card into the same card because I feel like most of this information is pretty um, basic as of now. So I like to include more information on one card. And I'll quiz myself on a little of things. So. Oh, let's see. This is so talking about the boundaries of the oral cavity proper. So I'm going to title this. Mm -hmm. This gives me an idea about what the card is about. So I've typed up everything. I think in general, it's pretty obvious that the tongue is the floor of the cavity and that on both sides of the cavity it's teeth. So I'm basically just going to close this part and the first part about the roof, hard palette, soft palette, I'll keep that in. Okay, so. Let's, I have all the text created in the cards. Now my next step is to also look at the images. Is there any extra cards I want to make? Mm -hmm. So I found that looking through this image, I see that the mucosa that's next to the teeth near outside is going to be buccal. And the one that's near the oral cavity proper is going to be lingual. I also realized that there's two types of mucosa. There's the alveolar and there's the palate. So I'm just going to note that down. Okay, I'm done. So that is basically one card for this one slide. What I could do is technically break up the information that I put in the back extra in order to make them into actual cards. But I don't want to do that because when I study this card, I'm just going to remind myself that I need to read the back extra section and I always, always refer back to the lecture notes if I need to. When I'm done, command enter or you can just click add and then it's done. So that's a wrap on a general idea of how I create new Anki cards. When I go to study them, I will... Oh, let me show you what it looked like when I study them. So here you can see that there's one new card. 
I'm gonna click study. This is what my card looks like. There's, it tells me oral cavity boundaries and spaces. So the oral vestibule is the space between, and I know it's the buccal mucosa and the buccal gingiva. Okay, so technically buccal mucosa, I think is alveolar mucosa. And I wanna check that. So I'm gonna go on Google actually. I don't think I need to know these details too much, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. But you realize that as I'm doing these cards, if there's something that I don't understand, I really take the time to figure it out because I haven't watched the lecture. And doing all this background research and learning the stuff before the lecture makes it so much easier for me to absorb and remember things when it comes time for you to watch the lecture or going to dissections or taking the exam. So let's say I look at this, I know that the space between the oral vestibule is buccal mucosa and gingival. Okay, so the roof is going to be hard and soft palate, tongue anterior to the teeth posterior is going to be, um, let's see, pterygoid palatine arches, okay, palatal pharyngeal arches. Okay, so I got this wrong which means what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit again. If I got the card right, I would hit good. But since I got it wrong, I'll hit again. And I'll see it in less than a minute. It actually bounces right back up to me because I have no other cards to study. But if I had other cards to study, then this card would show up a bit later and I would keep hitting again until I get the card correct. And this is the magic of Anki because it spaces out the cards for you based on how difficult you found them to be. So that's it for my little short tutorial on how I use Anki in my general study workflow. Usually on a daily basis, I'll try to finish all my reviews due for that day. I won't beat myself up too much if I don't manage to finish it, but I do really try to finish all my reviews. And keeping on top of my reviews is what helps keep me up to date and refreshed about everything that I've learned so far in the year. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button down below, and check out some of my other videos that I'll have linked here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!